Anti-globalism has been a major motivating issue for the right for a while now, with the obvious two main examples being the Brexit referendum and the election of Donald Trump, both of which were a result of a deep feeling that was opposed to the globalization that has been going on for quite a while now. This has caused a resurgence of nationalism and patriotism and various movements that have tried to curb the influences of globalism throughout the West. But what exactly is the issue, the really core issue, that makes globalism so bad? One of the most obvious ways to answer this question would be to point out the many particular policies that seem to be very damaging that are directly tied to globalism, such as trade policy and mass immigration. And certainly, these are issues which a lot of people care very deeply about on the right. However, there's something a bit deeper to why globalism itself, not just in these specific policies, but the ideology of globalism is deeply flawed, and these policies are just one particular result of that. The next most obvious answer is the issue of sovereignty, that people are having their sovereignty violated in their own individual local governments, and they're having that sovereignty transferred over to large, unaccountable, bureaucratic institutions. Whatever influence people could have had some degree of hope to have over their local governments is completely quashed when it is transferred to these institutions. This has caused a transformation where it seems that governments have gone from representing individual nations instead to individual economic units. That they no longer try to represent the character of a particular people, but just to manage the economics of a particular group. This results in a cosmopolitan Davos man in anywhere, a person that doesn't really care much about the local culture, the local environment that they live in, they just care about having a comfortable lifestyle that would more or less be the same whether it's in Paris or London or New York. It's easy to see how this process very rapidly causes the destruction of individual national and regional cultures, replacing them with one generalized global homogenous culture. This also creates what is obviously a quite self-sustaining system, because when you destroy someone's culture, why would they even care that much about their individual national sovereignty when they don't even feel like they're a part of a nation to begin with? So sovereignty can be destroyed, and culture can be destroyed, and it causes a vicious cycle where one feeds into the other, back and forth, back and forth. Those are the basic criticisms of globalism that you'll generally hear, and they're all true. I wouldn't disagree with any of them. But there's an issue. They don't quite get to the very heart of the problem. There's an issue with the very ideology of globalism itself that makes it fraught from the beginning, that makes the entire venture immoral. The issue is that globalism is a fundamental misunderstanding of the relationship that people are meant to have with each other. I've recently read an article on this topic which really put it clearly for me, and I'll be paraphrasing throughout the rest of this video. It's by a Catholic philosopher called Edward Fazer, and he writes a lot of very good stuff. He's probably my favorite contemporary Catholic writer. In this article, he critiques the three core Enlightenment values of liberty, equality, and fraternity. The problem with these values isn't that there's a possible definition under which each one of these is good, true, and beautiful. The problem is that they trade on their inherent vagueness. They're more a good slogan than good values. And the fact that they are so vague that they can be understood in so many different ways is what makes them such an adaptive slogan. It is this third value of fraternity which is relevant to the question of globalism. Because globalism is, in effect, one of the most radical understandings of this value that one can have. That is, the brotherhood of all nations and all people. The international cosmopolitan Davos man. The citizen of the world. The person that does not feel a particular loyalty to any particular place, but a generalized loyalty to the whole world, to all people. On first glance, this value might seem reasonable, especially from a Christian perspective. After all, didn't God so love the world? Didn't St. Paul say there's neither Jew nor Greek? This is, of course, because, like almost everything from progressives, this is a corruption of Christian values, not an actual Christian value. As G.K. Chesterton said, Heresy is not the ignoring of virtue altogether. It is the focus on one virtue to the exclusion of all others. It is going mad with that one virtue. When the universal brotherhood of all people 
is focused on to the exclusion of the particular brotherhoods of particular peoples. That is what we call the heresy of globalism. But okay, that's all just like really flowery language. What's really the problem here? What's really wrong with focusing on a generalized duty to all people rather than a specific duty to specific people? Shouldn't the goal be to just try and help everyone out, to just try and make the world a better place? Why is it that I need to focus on some particular group of people? Isn't that just some sort of bigotry, just some sort of in-group preference that we should try and move past? The issue with this prospect that we should move past our particular loyalties towards one sort of general loyalty is that it's no different than saying that we should move past the loyalty that you have for your own blood brother or sister or mother or father. It ignores the duty and responsibility that we have for each other, and tries to replace it with one sort of overarching duty for everyone. This family metaphor is really the right one, because the individual loyalty that one has for their own family is the same type of loyalty that one has on a broader sense for their own nation. And just as it would be wrong to violate the loyalty that you have to your own relatives, to your own brothers, it is also wrong to violate that same loyalty on a larger scale. Okay, but that's all really abstract. What do I mean by any of this? I think an example will really help illustrate what I'm talking about. Though granted, this is from myself, this isn't from Edward Fazer. Imagine a man, one day, who, for whatever reason, sees a child drowning, and he decides to go and try and rescue that child, risking his life in the process, and ultimately he ends up dying, though saving the child. Now, I think pretty much anyone hearing such a story would say that man is heroic, and he did a good thing. He risked his life and ultimately gave his life for a child he didn't even know. And similarly, if the same example happened, but a man risked his life and gave his life for his own child, people would also probably similarly say he's heroic. However, let's take a third example of a man which sees two children drowning, one of which is his own, another which is a child he has never met before. He knows that he only has the ability to save one, and that the other will almost certainly die and he chooses to save the child that he has never met before, leaving his own child to die, and he himself dies in the process. What would we say of this man, the man who knowingly allowed his own child to die to save another man's child? Is there not something deeply morally suspect here? That a man would forsake his own flesh and blood to save someone else? Is there not some deep perversion going on? There is a deep perversion, a perversion in the moral value, a perversion in the duty of care that this father has to his own child, he forsakes that duty for a far more generalized duty to someone he has never met. There's hardly a more heroic act than giving your life for someone else's, but giving your own child's life? This is the fundamental moral error of globalism. It's an utter perversion of the relationships and the loyalties and the duties that we have to one another. The difference between being a citizen of a nation and a citizen of the world might seem like a mere preference, and being a citizen of the world to us on the right might seem like an awfully odd and awfully degenerated preference, but it might still seem just like a preference all the same. That's not the reality. The reality is it's an utterly disordered state to be in. With all that, it should make quite a bit more sense why communism has always advocated for the abolition of family and the abolition of the nation, because it is this value of fraternity brought to its most logical, to its most extreme end, and it is the destruction of everything that stands in between that. When you have the loyalty to your brother or to your mother, that is taken away from the loyalty that you have to a generalized mass of all humanity. So, if you want the true radical left, the true communism, you need to destroy that. You need to take away children from their mothers, and you need to take away countrymen from each other. The family and the nation are two of the most basic elements of any society, and they need to be destroyed not just because they'll resist the revolution, but because they are by their very nature the opposite of what the radical left is trying to achieve. They want to destroy the real brotherhood of brothers for their fake brotherhood. Thanks for watching, and please donate to my Subscribestar or Patreon if you enjoy this content. And please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and make sure to share these videos with anyone who you think might find it interesting. And a special thanks to my donors, Charismatic Byzantine, Quo Pregranator, Hexorius, Adzutko, Josiah, 
King of Evil Florida and the Moon, Seth Apex, Lita, and Emmett Vestry. And thank you everyone very much for watching. Goodbye.